So what would you suggest? History is a snail crawling down the trail. Let us think briefly of the years 1965 to 1968. Experienced a fantastic social transformation more than we could have dreamed. Now, true, it's, it died. It peaked and died. And nevertheless, what could be achieved, and it was uh, kind of going in the direction we've been uh, talking about. There we had the <clears throat> total transformation of the family into the extended family of a uh, prehistoric tribal life. We had the resacralization of the world with new religions, uh, some of them inherited from the pagan past, practiced on every mountaintop in California and around the world. There we had new forms of music, new forms of government, new schools, different ways of teaching, an entire new society, such as we feel we need now. Mm -hmm. And nevertheless, it failed. Furthermore, we experienced that it had faults in its structure and also the staff, um, some of the people involved, such as us, had faults which we carried along from our history in this dominator society that we couldn't uh, expunge sufficiently rapidly to function successfully in the new family structures and so on. So when for example, we can dismiss uh, revolutionary movements of the environment and uh, women's rights. Uh, on the other hand, the existence of these movements, which began in the, with the failure of the 60s revolution and continue to this day, when another social transformation of that rapidity should start, if that were a possibility, then the progress made in the meanwhile might actually the, be the foundation for a success instead of a failure of that three-year miracle. So that's just for the sake of optimism to recall that a rapid change can take place and we have made big strides as a family in the intervening years. So if we could achieve even a fraction of what was achieved in the 60s, that might actually be enough. Probably not because, don't forget, there was the forces of opposition, right, mm -hmm. with their, as documented in the end of your book with their insidious campaign of crack cocaine, heroin from the Golden Triangle, and so on, destroying the heart of the revolutionary movement in urban America. So um, we need more than uh, images. I think we need to think of a trigger, what you call a clarion call in your book. And um, well, we want to avoid the use of the word revolution due to the fact that that always polarizes a equal and opposite reaction, which we don't want to trigger. But call it an evolution. An evolution. In the past, mm -hmm. there have been all of these, um, you know, popular uprisings where actually the trigger came. We don't care who's elected. Because the government follows. It doesn't lead. We need leadership now. Leadership comes from people. That's us. So um, we, we don't want a violent revolution and just we would like to see a kind of a wake up where a certain number of people just woke up and said that's enough of that. That's all. Like we, the idea, and then um, to start doing it. What, we don't even know whatever triggered one of these major social transformations of the past, such as, let's say, the Renaissance, or the one we actually lived through, the 1960s. What triggered it? I know what you'd say. <laughs> it's too obvious. It's what anyone would say. Well, <laughs> Try and go for the Renaissance. Something Money. Is, <laughs> something is happening again. History is an alchemical rarefaction that at the end will all go off hand in hand with the sacred heart or You're something right. but i do believe that um history is the proof of the presence of a hyperdimensional something or other which is acting on ordinary biology but what are we going to do until that final moment when it reveals itself. The concept which lies behind this is the idea of guiding images. That a society has to be given guiding images. 
McLuhan said the 20th century has navigated the way you drive a car using a rear view mirror. In other words, almost entirely without guiding images. It's the disgrace of 20th century social philosophy that the only two innovative social ideas the 20th century can claim as its own are Freudian psychoanalysis, which was put out of business last week by Woody Allen, and fascism. These are the two authentic ideological contributions of the 20th century. Uh, socialism is a 19th century idea, fully worked out. Uh, in the 19th century. So I think that, uh, you know, I'm basically an optimist, but not because I have faith in human institutions, but because I think there is a transcendental attractor that will eventually pull our chestnuts out of the fire. But in the time which lies between then and now, uh, and in the spirit of covering one's bets, I think it's worthwhile talking about how society should seriously be reconstructed to make it uh, uh, a more livable place. I think the recent election in England and the election we're enduring here prove that we cannot expect to hear any kind of meaningful reformist rhetoric from politicians and have there be any hope of it actually being uh, uh, winning at the polls. So then it behooves dissidents like ourselves to try and offer something other than, uh, uh, you know, UFO rescue or utter despair as the two poles of the, of the political dialogue.